Hi, welcome everyone to the Singapore Student Learning Space Release 17 Spotlight, a release-specific live event brought to you by the SLS office. So firstly, we would like to thank every one of you for taking the time to attend this session. In a while, you'll get to hear from our guest speaker, Mr. Chia Haixiang, on our latest feature on SLS gamification. So Haixiang is currently a Master Specialist in Technologies for Learning Branch, Education Technology Division, MOE, and has been the product owner of Singapore Student Learning Space since 2019. He also heads the X Labs, a team of MOE specialists focused on education technology research, and is the MOE lead at National University of Singapore's AI Centre for Education Technologies. If you have any questions at any point of time during today's session, do post them on Pigeon Hole. We will have two dedicated Q&A slots happening at 3.20pm and 3.45pm to address the questions. If you see a question on Pigeon Hole which you would like addressed during the session, you may upvote the question. Due to time constraints, note we may only have time to address at most three to four questions. For the remaining questions we do not manage to address during our session today, we will compile them and provide the responses through an FAQ, which will be posted in the user guide and shared in our post-event spotlight course through the community gallery. More information will be shared at a later date. So this is an overview of today's session. And let's begin about gamification. So what is gamification all about? Why should teachers consider gamifying the learning experiences for students? Yeah, thanks, Zinia. So first and foremost, just want to echo uh, what Zinia said, right? Okay, thanks for joining us, All right. So uh, I think uh, I think gamification, a lot of definitions for gamification, but uh, I think the simple thing to talk about is really the fact that uh, it's about using game elements to motivate learning, right? Again, it's a bit different from, you know, other terms that have been bandied around, things like game-based uh, learning and, and things like that, right? Okay, but uh, very specifically, I think uh, the general idea that uh, gamification is is almost like a game layer, right? Okay, that basically helps to encourage or engage uh, students in their learning. Yeah. So, one of the things is that why gamify learning, right? Okay, and I th I think that the great thing that uh, we are hearing from the ground is that you know after the introduction of some of these game features um, or gamification features in SLS. Over the last few months, I think we're very happy to hear that actually, you know, students have been responding well, right, okay, to this, right, okay, very exciting uh, examples, right, okay, of uh, gamification that the teachers are already doing, right, okay, with their classes. Um, so, I think many of the teachers, right, okay, in some ways or other, right, okay, might have experimented with gamification with, without technology, right, okay, and it's quite possible to do so without technology. And most of the teachers will say, identify with what I'm going to say next, right, okay, which is how, you know, how um, this is uh, useful is really because um, gamification provides a way in which, um, you know, we can use methods, right, okay, or ways, uh, features, right, okay, or, or some 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 uh, elements right okay in order to drive student uh, engagement right okay in learning right and I think that um, especially in a situation whereby basically with attack one of the things that we discover is that when we try to teach for example virtually right okay or asynchronously that means you know um, you know at different timings right okay we lose a lot of the kind of motivational levers that we, we might have had have as teachers in, in class, right? So in teacher in, in class you might be able to, you know, redirect student attention, right, okay, when you need to, or find other ways to re-engage students, right, okay? Which you lose uh, whenever you have attack, right, okay, and, and you do this, try to do this virtually or asynchronously. So gamification brings about that capability to bring that back, right, okay, to actually do this in a disintermediated manner, right? Okay, which means that the teacher doesn't need to be there. Yeah, right, again, okay, I can still engage and motivate students. Yeah. So you mentioned gamification motivates students even without teacher presence. In order for teachers to motivate their students, they first have to know what are some of the motivational factors. So what are some of these motivational factors? Yeah, so I think uh, I think most people are familiar with the idea of SDT, right? Self-determination theory, right? Again, okay, self-determination theory by Desi and Desi have... Uh, mentioned right okay that there are three main components for motivation right autonomy competence and relatedness right so autonomy is really about this idea of choice right okay and interestingly i think in most uh, classroom environments because of our busyness and things like that we, we generally don't try to provide a lot of choice to students right okay or even if the choices are provided to students they are not necessarily 
really meaningful choices, right? Okay. So it is quite possible to provide choice without gamification. But I think gamification brings with it this general idea. Many of the gamification features is really about choice, right? Okay. Uh, so for example, uh, I think in, in some of the features that we have introduced, right? Okay, the difference between, for example, XP and achievements. And we are we are always you know, providing, for example, for achievements, right? It documents uh, student learning, right? Okay, um, and uh, it allows the students to kind of decide: should I go for this particular achievement? That is itself is a choice, right? Okay, and especially if these achievements are tied to certain optional activities or stretch activities, all right? Okay, um, so. One of the problems is that if you offer optional activities to students, right, they, usually most students, unless those super motivated ones, uh, they, they'll generally not try to uh, uh, complete it, right, okay? But uh, if you have achievement tied to it, right, suddenly you have a reward, right, okay, that is, uh, that is tied to, to completion, right, okay? So it's a positive reinforcement for certain activities which uh, you want to encourage the students to to do but still fundamentally provide their choice uh, for them right and then the, for things like competence right okay um, students are motivated when they feel a you know sense of increasing a kind of competence and progress i think we all know that right okay but uh, unfortunately i think learning always in, uh, involves a lot of this trying and getting things wrong right okay so things like xp right okay or experience points is very interesting because it provides a uh, uh, alternate almost an alternate currency right okay for to, to actually document student efforts right okay that is not necessarily tied to my competence in the subject right so if the child for example maybe is very weak in maths right okay but you gamify a maths lesson for example even though he, he or she could continue to get certain maths questions wrong right okay and therefore experience frustration there is this separate way in which you can uh, document his uh, effort right again okay, that is using xp and then also i think teachers there's this hidden benefit also for teachers right because they are able to distinguish between effort as well as mastery right okay and one of the problems that we have sometimes as teachers is we tend to reward uh, student uh, effort right okay by just giving them perhaps more bonus points right okay or we uh, we so-called punish students for late work, for not putting in the effort by again taking away these points. But once you conflate these two things, right, okay, effort and mastery, you, you end up with this problem that potentially the, the marks don't necessarily reflect uh, just uh, pure uh, mastery, right, okay, and being able to kind of distinguish these two is actually a very useful thing. The last thing, of course, is relatedness, right, okay, and I think students are feel motivated when they feel connected, right, either to their learning experience or to their teachers uh, or their peers, right. Um, so I think with gamification, there are two elements that actually create um, relatedness, right. Okay, one is this idea that you can create this compelling narrative, right, okay, and this narrative can be done through things like story elements, right, okay, so you want to, you, you want the kids to imagine that when they are learning they're not actually just learning the content right okay you can create this separate kind of story narrative that uh, helps them to imagine themselves as perhaps you know eco warriors for example trying to save the world rather than just learning about climate change right okay or they they can be i, I don't know right okay um, um trying to solve a mystery right okay um rather than just um you know do, um uh, um uh, learning about uh, certain uh, scientific concepts right and then the other way in which I think it also involves relatedness is this idea that basically um, you can have leaderboards, right? Okay. And so there's always this idea that there's this friendly competition that students can have with, uh, with, with, with others in the, in the classroom, right? Okay. And therefore, they feel related to a learning community. Yeah. Sure. So gamification sure seems like the way to go. So since gamification can motivate students to take charge of their learning, should teachers gamify lessons at every opportunity possible? I think that um, basically gamification has always, I mean, in the literature itself, uh, has always, you know, had this uh, kind of uh, problematic uh, position, right? Okay, and there are folks that, you know, talk about how, you know, gamification is just not necessarily always a positive thing, especially given the fact that many parts of our world today, not just in education, it's, it's gamified, right? Okay, and so there's almost an over gamification almost every single uh, component, right? Okay, you have your bubble tea cards that are gamified as well, right? Okay, you have, um, you know, almost every single uh, purchase, for example, nowadays is gamified in some ways, right? Um, and, you know, people have also talked about how 
actually school school is a little bit of a gamification uh, but just poorly done gamification because marks are effective like xp and you know achievements are basically your first second third prize and, and things like that. it's just that it's poorly done right okay um but um i think fundamentally many of the arguments against gamification is the fact that gamification is ultimately still a uh, extrinsic motivation. I think we need to recognize that, right? Okay, it's using external kind of motivators to try to encourage teach, uh, kids to learn, right? Okay, so there is this uh, research that has done that if there's too much extrinsic motivation, right? Okay, students' intrinsic motivation can be affected, right? Okay, and actually can can actually diminish. But there's also countervailing, you know, research that actually says that, you know, extrinsic motivation can be the start, right, okay, to actually lead towards uh, you know, students eventually building intrinsic motivation. And the key difference is really, um, you know, the way in which we do this uh, gamification. If gamification can very at every opportunity point towards the content that the students are actually learning, then extrinsic motivators that actually be working in, in gamification can actually lead to intrinsic motivation, right? Okay, so some examples I think we, we've tried to um, list uh, is that basically you can think of, you know, some of the uh, gamification tools, right? Okay, as potentially pointing towards, um, you know, the content that you're teaching, right? Okay, and and these these things, I think we have seen examples of teachers actually doing very well. For example, one of the uh, gamification uh, examples that I've seen before is um, for literature teachers. You will know that there's this book called The uh, Boy in Striped Pajamas. Okay, and in that particular book, uh, it's really about a German kid, right? Okay, who makes friends, right? Okay, has a friendship with a Jewish kid uh, in a concentration camp, right? Okay, so a gamified lesson actually, I've seen a gamified lesson actually uh, make the students adopt the role of effectively prisoners in Auschwitz, right? Okay, and their objective is try to try to escape from from that, right? Okay, and the XP and the achievements is all about that, right? Okay, and once you do this, right? Okay, the mechanics of the uh, the dynamics of the game actually, while the students are actually participating through that, right, okay, actually is able to also bring about certain uh, learning outcomes, right, okay, learning intentions, which is building empathy for the characters inside the uh, inside the, the book that you are studying, right, okay. So there's this close knitting of, of uh, the gamification layer, so it's not a, a separate independent kind of layer, right, okay, but this general idea that your ob objective is to try to bring those extrinsic motivators towards uh, uh, towards the intrinsic interest, right? Okay, in the contents that you are uh, teaching. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Hai Xiang, for your insightful sharing. So, before we begin our first Q and A session, could you summarize for us how does gamification fit into the lesson design? Right. So, I think this uh, slide actually demonstrates, um, you know, a lot of the things that we are talking about. Right. So, gamification, you can think of it as really a game layer. This game layer itself uh, can have autonomy. Uh, it builds autonomy, competence, and relatedness, right? Okay, but fundamentally, it's still a layer, right? Okay, the learning content sits uh, below, and that's really what we're interested in getting the kids to be intrinsically motivated about, right? Okay, uh, and for this particular learning content, uh, you can also build, right? Okay, autonomy, competence, relatedness, right? Okay, for this learning content, right? Okay, so uh, one example, for example, of uh, autonomy, right? Okay, for learning content is just simply giving kids more choices in the kind of contents that they 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 they, uh, they want to learn, and also the ways in which they can express their their mastery. For example, right? Okay, producing different kinds of products, right? Okay, to demonstrate their mastery, right? In terms of competence, right? Okay, you can create that sense of competence by providing much faster, quicker feedback, right? Okay, for students, right? Okay, and that's that's a way where you can create a competence, and then I think. Relatedness definitely in terms of thinking about imaginative ways in which teachers, uh, in which students can actually apply their learning in the real world, right? Okay, so again, I've seen examples of how uh, teachers actually, you know, in teaching, for example, a, a, a secondary uh, school writing, right? Okay, actually make students write uh, actual letters, for example, to uh, community leaders who show them the power of persuasive writing, all right? Okay, so using some of the key principles for gamification which is the autonomy competence and relatedness and also applying that i think to the learning content that is really probably the most powerful way you can actually uh, apply gamification yeah okay thank you so much so now we have actually come to our first q a session okay maybe we will start with the one of eight votes first yes yeah 
So what is the easiest way to add gamification? Starting from a template or starting from an existing course? Well, it really depends. <laughs> if you have already have an existing course, I think that's probably from there you can you know add uh, gamification elements, right? Okay. Um, I would recommend uh, looking at some of the templates that basically it's already inside a community gallery. And I also again want to encourage uh, teachers, right? Okay, who are kind of lo uh, logging into to think about actually sharing your gamified lessons in community gallery, right? Okay, because even if, let's say, for example, folks don't necessarily use your content, uh, uh, they might actually use your gamification layer, right? Potentially, for example, just replacing the content uh, with their own content, for example, right? Okay, and that's very, very helpful. So the hope is that basically we have more and more of these um, templates that's available for folks to, to, to share in the, um, in the community gallery. So one trick that you can do is maybe start with the template first, right? Okay, and then basically think about copying, uh, you know, activities from even existing courses, right? Okay, you can actually kind of just check box, you know, every single piece of uh, activity, right? Okay, from an existing course to kind of move that to an existing gamified templated lesson, right? Okay, and so th so that would be a very easy way to kind of merge the, the two together. Okay, thank you so much, Hai for answering that question. Let's keep the rest coming. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe we have this one. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you elaborate how gamified lessons can focus on KTEFL, so assessment for learning, instead of over-focused reliance on XPs and levels? Yeah, okay. So I think, I mean, I spoke about this, right, whereby there's, there's concerns uh, with regards to gamification and, you know, kids, uh, being kids, right, okay. I mean, the power, right, okay, of a gamification layer is also its bane, right, okay, because you don't want the kids to be so attracted to gamification and then just, you know, chasing XP and chasing levels and then, you know, you just miss out on all these uh, learning, right, okay, and, and that's not what you, you want, right. So I think that, one of the things that, uh, again, you know, I think I've shared some of these, these examples, right, okay, whereby, you know, can we use ways in which we can redirect uh, some of this um, attention, right, okay, uh, quite intentionally, right, okay, from your gamified uh, kind of narrative or teams, right, okay, uh, to try to bring that back to the learning content. Um, I would also want to say that... Um, there are there are differences as well in terms of uh, the way that you might regard uh, different types of assessment that you want to do, right? Okay, so uh, one advantage of actually having you know XP and, and levels is because if the kids are really interested in wanting to chase after XP and levels, right? Okay, you can create circumstances whereby the student almost um, unconsciously you know does a lot more. Uh, practice, right? Okay, for example, they will retry questions, right? Okay, re-attempt questions, or even attempt uh, harder questions that you know in in normal circumstances they might miss out or they might not put a lot of effort in, right? Okay, so one of the things that we are going to talk about perhaps later in the second thing, but I might as well mention here is that there are ways in which you can balance off experience points, right? Okay, uh, and 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 marks, right? Okay. Um, in a way that actually allows you to shape certain student behaviors, right? Okay, so one of the things that maybe for teachers, we find that uh, a lot of the times the kids might go and attempt very easy questions, MCQs, MRQs, right? And then, you know, once it comes to an essay, it's so difficult to get them to write any essays at all, right? Okay, but the, the great thing about having XP, especially if, let's say, for example, certain achievements are only achievable if, let's say, for example, you do an essay or, you know, uh, you know, the only ways in which you can get a lot of XP because, you know, usually essays are maybe 20 marks versus a, maybe a one mark or two mark MCQ. Uh, it might end up that basically you then encourage uh, kids to do uh, more of these perhaps harder and tougher questions, right? Okay, so it's, think about how you can actually use XP to kind of guide uh, student or preferences, right, okay, or behavior towards things that you, you really want to do. So in AFL, for example, you want them to uh, try maybe harder questions, uh, try structured questions, try 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 uh, essay questions, and you might be able to use XP to do so. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Aisyang. Shall we do this one? Okay. Okay, I'm having trouble creating a good game story. Is there any tips? Well, uh, it's not 
easy to create a good game story but I think a lot of times the inspiration can come from uh, mass media actually right okay so if you watch a movie right okay um, you've got a game you've got a story there already right if you read fiction books you've got a story there right so one of the things is that uh, how can you think of what is available in mass media what's common right okay because the kids also probably are watching the thing right okay so if let's say for example the next avengers movie comes out right okay you can always use avengers right okay uh, i mean just be careful our ip right okay but uh uh, things like this is stuff that uh, basically it's it's easy, right? Okay, there's uh, I think once you actually have an eye out for looking for for some of these stories, uh, you realize that stories are actually everywhere, right? Okay, the the latest movie, the latest TV shows. So I've seen, for example, um, uh, I actually worked with teachers uh, who actually gamified their lessons uh, based on Sherlock Holmes, right? Okay, and. Uh, that was on the book, right? Okay, not the TV series, but you know, you could easily have used the TV series to actually, um, you know, create that game story as well. Okay, great. So I guess teachers being really creative, right? You can just use anything that you experience to create your game story. Okay, let's have another one of these. So uh, appreciate the gamification features in R17. Kids and teachers love them. So what refinements and enhancements can we look forward to the next less, uh, to the next release? Okay, so the unfortunate problem of being a product owner for, for, for SLS is that there are million and one uh, things that should have been built yesterday, right? Okay, so I think for the first kind of, uh, we're quite happy, I think, with the first uh, kind of layer of gamification. And I, I do want, I think we do want, um, I know folks are excited, right? Okay, I'm sure you have many ideas about new features and things like that, but probably not the next release. We will not uh, have any uh, more things, right? Okay, for, for gamification specifically. But please be rest assured that I think uh, two or three releases down, we definitely want to expand and enhance uh, gamification. There are many, many more areas in which we can do, uh, but we need to balance off with, again, you know, just like. Uh, we have asked that you you balance off your gamification layer with intrinsic motivation for learning. We do want to build uh, learning features that are basically uh, uh, directly useful, I think, for teaching and learning. Uh, we can share a little bit about you know some of these uh, features that are coming up uh, in the future, right? Okay, at the end of the second session, right? Okay, and then basically, you know, uh, please feel free to add I think any ideas that you have as well, right? Okay, for features, right? Okay, inside the pigeonhole, and we can always take it back. Okay, thank you. So indeed, we will actually be sharing a little bit about what gamification has to offer in the future. So just stay with us to the end. So I think we have one on IP. So I'm concerned about IP when making achievements. Is there any common repository for us to take images from? I think that um, there are many uh, common use um, uh, images out there, right? Okay, um, you don't have to worry. I think too much, right? Okay, a lot of times when we look at uh, uh, IP issues, right? Okay, if, uh, especially in a situation of for, for teaching and learning for our, for our kids, right? Okay, uh, given also the size of the 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 images that we are talking about, right? Okay, when we put it up as achievements, I think there are many places that we can uh, find. I think. Uh, uh, Images, right? Okay, that you can probably uh, probably use, right? Because these are all under fair use uh, cases. Um, I mean, if you're talking about like commercial IP, I would say that there's a lot of uh, fan art <laughs> and fan images which actually have no IP issues, right? Okay, and that are probably sometimes even better, uh, you know, visually uh, compared to the original IP, right? Okay, and so those are things that basically can be used, right? Okay, and so. I think teachers also, I, I can't share with you that's common repository and even if I were to share with you this common repository, you're going to find that uh, it's very boring, right? Okay, after a while you, you won't, uh, but I think Google searches should bring you very far, right? Okay, and um, being creative about it, I think it's uh, things that we can, we can do, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that tip. So, um, one more question. Was there any study done regarding the efficacy of gamification? Could you share some to create buy-in from other teachers? Okay, so the the term gamification only came around in 2011, right? Okay, um, so it's a really new 
field, right? Okay, or, or you know, it says doesn't have very strong uh, clarity in terms of its theoretical foundations, right? Okay, um, there have been many studies, right? Okay, to do with uh, efficacy of gamification, and I think in general, um, it is no doubt that basically it definitely improves. Um, you know, engagement improves uh, both, I think, behavioral and, 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 and cognitive engagement, right, okay? The issue here is really, I think, as I shared, right, okay, that there are longer-term concerns, right, okay, with regards to many uh, things. And because of such diverse ways in which gamification is done, right, okay, um, things like, for example, if, you, if the question is, does it lead to good academic outcomes? Gamification uh, promotes certain behaviors, uh, if these behaviors are are not properly uh, done by a teacher to kind of say you know it necessarily improves learning outcomes. So for example, the drill and practice, we we all know that we do a lot of drill and practice, but it's not very conscious drill and practice, or you're doing it uh, with 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 uh, perhaps perhaps uh, assessments that's really not not very beneficial for the child, right? Because the more you do it. The actually the weaker, I mean the, the poorer your academic outcomes could potentially be, right? Okay. So just like any other things, gamification is a tool. The gamification itself doesn't directly lead to T and L outcomes, right? Okay. There is the other point which is to say that your pedagogy and your capability of actually um, understanding what positive, what what correct behaviors, what right behaviors at the right time for our students actually lead to le real learning. Uh, is essential because you could potentially be using gamification to do things that are actually negative, right? Okay, for the student. Um, so I think it needs to work together with 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 uh, with with other aspects of teaching and learning, right? Okay, and so that's just a long roundabout way to say that there is evidence, right? Okay, but there's also a lot of mixed evidence because of the way in which. Uh, uh, many of these uh, research uh, and experiments are done where it doesn't control for some of these factors, right? Okay, the teacher capability, uh, teachers' uh, expertise in terms of teaching and learning specifically, right? Okay, and then also, of course, the application of uh, uh, good, uh, you know, gamification elements at the right time as well. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Haishan. And this actually marks the end of our first segment of our Q&A. Don't worry, we'll be coming back soon in a bit. So... Let's move on to the next part of our segment. So, earlier, Haixiang shared with us the general principles and concerns behind gamification. So what about gamification within SLS? So Haixiang, with so many other gamification sites such as Kahoot, Quizzes, Deck Toys, what makes SLS gamification so different from them? Yeah, so I think that, you know, when we first started, I mean, gamification is a feature that has been what, like, widely re requested, right, okay, since I think the beginnings of the SLS, actually, right, okay. Um, and we took uh, some time to really uh, build up, like I said, really the teaching and learning uh, features, right, okay, many of the other, you know, demands on, on SLS before we, we embarked on, on building the gamification features, right, okay. And when we decided to, uh, do this, we, we wanted to make sure that it would work synergistically with a lot of gamification that's already happening, right, okay, using other applications out there, right, okay. Uh, um, so these are the three kind of main kind of principles. Number one is, I mean, I think uh, it's, uh, it's very common for gamification, this idea of positive reinforcement only, all right, okay. Um, I think one of the key you know, power of gamification is really that basically uh, because, um, like I said, really it's an alternate currency, right? Okay, we can always afford uh, to um, just be positive, right? Okay, and to really emphasize positive reinforcement. So if you realize that, for example, uh, even when students uh, submit the work late that time, right? Okay, we just um, reduce the 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 percentage of uh, XP that is awarded, we never take away XP, right? Okay, we never. I mean, the way that you might take away marks or, or things like that, right? Okay. So the other thing that we also do also about positive reinforcement is being very mindful that you know we, uh, for for example, for things like friendly competition, we didn't want leaderboards to show everybody, right? Okay, so that kids right at the bottom don't feel. Uh, negatively affected, right? Okay, uh, so we only show the top fifty percent, right? Okay, to avoid discouraging them. Then the other key principle, which I thought was very important for us, was this idea that we wanted to make sure that it was customizable by teachers, right? So 
um, there are many uh, platforms out there right okay, that gamify but they gamify with a single narrative they gamify with single set of avatars for example or single set of achievements and, and things like that right so everybody needs to you know align to that uh, to that uh, to that uh, gamified world uh, uh, effectively right okay but we believe that teachers are very creative and we believe that students part of the excitement i think for gamification is also novelty right okay so we want the teachers to be able to create your own gamified experience right okay so again i've explained this to many people we, we think of sls as a toolbox actually right okay we want to equip the toolbox for teachers to be able to kind of uh, as, as, have as many tools to actually provide your own um, you know experience for the students so it might take a little bit more work especially if you don't use your own templates but I think most teachers will um, will appreciate the kind of flexibility that they have to create their own game stories and achievements yeah and then I think uh, the last thing is really this idea that uh, we wanted to you know write on I guess what is the strength of SLS, which is the ability to pull together all these learning experiences together into, you know, a course, for example, right? And that's why our emphasis, I think, on course level gamification first. So with this course level gamification, it is potentially possible for you to then synergize with a lot of these other tools, right? Like uh, Who's Deck Toys, right? Which actually operate at different levels, right? Whether it's at activity level or, or, or lesson level. And then just pull that all together with this overall kind of course level gamification. And then the one of the questions that people have also asked, why don't you just kind of gamify the entire class group, right? Okay, which means that, you know, from uh, Jan 1st all the way to the end of the uh, academic year, why don't you just create this idea of, you know, uh, just gamify everything? Why are you doing it at the kind of almost like course level, right? Okay, or the assigned course level. Uh, and one of the key things is really, again, I've explained that basically some people have, uh, have felt that uh, schooling is actually just poor gamification. And one of the key reasons why schooling is poor gamification is that there isn't a, really a chance for kids to catch up or to restart. Right? So some of the great value of actually having an assignment level gamification or a course level gamification is that if the kid does poorly in one course, right, okay, there's always a chance to restart. Right? The next time around a course comes on. Right, okay, so that's quite critical as well, right? Okay, so really deciding where exactly we're gonna gamify it and what we wanted to, to do, um, you know, at which level was important. Yeah. Yeah. So feature levels, right? Uh, which uh, uh, feature highlights, right? Okay, so maybe I'll explain a little bit about I mean, some of the feature highlights that uh, we, we have. I think most teachers have already had a chance to kind of explore this, right? Okay, and so it should be very familiar, right? Um, so just also some tips, right? Some suggestions, right? XPs are used to be used as motivators. Please don't uh, be stingy with your XP, right? Okay. Uh, please award like super high amounts, right? Okay. So for those of you who play games, you will know that uh, when you play a game like uh, I don't know Genshin Impact or whatever, right? Okay. The XP is ridiculous, right? Okay. 5 million and also can, right? Okay, so doesn't matter, right? Okay, because they are all, they are all free, <laughs> right? Okay, so I mean, uh, having large number amounts of XP is its own motivator, right? Um, and I think the other thing about XP is really this idea that there should be a gradual increase in um, the demands for our students, right? Okay, so that, you know, uh, start with, uh, with easy wins, right? Okay, um, uh, so, you know, your, your first few levels, for example, very easy to achieve, right, okay? So, uh, but then later on, it should, it should get harder and harder, right, okay? And really, this is because uh, uh, you will find that basically students will get more and more invested, right, okay? At first, when you first start the time, some, some kids will definitely ask you, what, what can you get for our XP, right, okay? There's no benefit, right? Why? So silly, right, okay? You're just getting XP for nothing, right, okay? But interesting psychological behavior is that the more I invest to create an XP, you are building up a bank, right? Okay? And the more you're invested, the more the kids will want to invest, right? Okay? And use this particular property uh, to challenge them to do more, right? Okay? So if you look at the default XP to level kind of thing that we have actually constructed, it's it's a gradual increase, right? Okay, and it requires the students to do more, right? Okay, to get to the next level, right? Okay, and that is the right thing to do because we are, you're trying to engage, uh, fundamentally try to uh, encourage the students to 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 put in more effort, right? Okay, as things uh, as the course goes on. 
uh, customizable achievements and stories, right? Okay. Uh, I think one of the key things is really, uh, I mentioned uh, again, right? Autonomy is such an important part of um, uh, gamification as well as I think in terms of intrinsic motivation or content, right? Okay. So one of the things that you need to you need to probably do is uh, not only to create more optional stretch activities that really intentionally you are trying to ensure that students have choices right okay so that it's not very meaningful to gamify a experience that you know the kids can just go one path right okay and they every single activity in front of them they need to do right okay because that's not exercising choice right okay but if you give them say a, a good uh, a good uh, percentage to, to think about is maybe about 25%, right? Okay, if you are able to give them perhaps 25% of those particular activities to be optional, right? Okay, then, you know, you will then see that kids uh, are uh, going to be motivated to say, I've made a choice, right? Okay, to do these stretch activities. And then you tie these particular achievements. The other little trick that you can do is to think about how you can create different kinds of achievements, right? Okay, even if a kid does one activity, can you do think about different kinds of achievements, right? So there's there's ways in which you can create, say for example, uh, uh, achievement for completing just an activity, but maybe an additional activity, uh, 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 additional for for quizzes, for example, additional achievement if the kid got eighty percent and above, right? Okay. So then you know there is this again this difference. It's not everybody gets the same achievements at the end, right? Okay. But there's some differentiation and there's some choice, yeah. Um, and I think that basically this um, idea of uh, stories, right? Okay, um, when you put conditional stories that um, unravel or everybody loves a, a good story, right? Okay, but think of a story as a narrative that unfolds as you go through a course, right? Okay, so tying game stories uh, to conditional um, achievements or conditional uh, progress, right? Okay, in the course, right? Okay, that would be very helpful. So you, you end up with some students wanting to find out what happens, right? Okay, and therefore that can also encourage students to actually just continue to progress on in the course. Yeah. Yeah. So manual award of XP and achievements is another thing that we added and we thought it was absolutely essential, right? Okay, because we know that not all the teaching and learning that we have actually uh, go in the SLS lesson. In in fact, right, okay, you can actually create very little content in SLS, right? Okay. Uh, but actually use the SLS gamification feature to uh, use uh, with this manual award of XP to actually drive or gamify your normal TNL non-digital um, teaching and learning experiences, right? Okay, because you can use that particular uh, lesson as almost like a container, right? Okay, uh, and you can actually do a lot more manual award of XP, right? So some of the ideas would be, oh, great contributions in class, for example, and you want to drive student discussion in class, you can always manually award XP, right? Okay, and the, the power of this manual award of XP is that you can actually state out, right, okay, and capture what exactly is the reason why you were awarded certain XP. And you can do the same thing for achievements as well, right? Okay, so if let's say, for example, a, a student, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, helps another child, for example, right, okay, that can, that can be a, uh, a positive uh, behavior that you want to encourage in your classroom, and that can be also another achievement, yeah, all right? Um, and then I think the last little point that we wanted to say was why did we build also uh, the ability to switch gamification uh, on and off, right? Okay, um, uh, and different components of uh, achieve uh, uh, of gamification on and off. Uh, I think um, it's very important for you to understand your students as well, right? Okay, so there are certain classes where leaderboards are very negative things, right? Okay, because they become very, very competitive, right? So if you understand your children, you might want to say, let's switch that off, right? Okay, I, I might not always uh, switch off, uh, switch on uh, leaderboards all the time, right? Okay, uh, you can also, of course, switch off gamification completely, right? Okay, if you decide, right? So if you do, for example, share a gamified lesson but for certain um, um, uh, classes, right? Okay, you might not actually want uh, to actually always gamify, right? Again, I think the essential thing is also to bring this idea that gamification is not always compulsory. Um, so you, even in an entire class, you really find that there's groups of students who, you know, not really engage in this XP, you know, and, and leaderboard kind of thing. There shouldn't be any reason why you should uh, force them at all, right? Okay, because 
again, right, what's the main focus is the teaching and learning uh, of the content. Okay, thank you Haixiang for explaining to us how a gamification within SLS actually works. And I really like it that gamification is actually quite flexible within SLS and it's actually not compulsory for every student to actually have to go through. So um, we have actually tied, um, come to the part two of our Q&A session. So teachers, if you have any questions regarding SLS, do leave them in Pigeon Home. So I thought before we answer the questions, uh, mm -hmm. maybe we can uh, mm -hmm. just jump to um, new features or some of the features that we are thinking about, you know, for the next level of uh, gamification, right? Okay, just to share a little bit about uh, some of this. Uh, and again, like I said already, I think if you have some ideas, right, okay, please uh, do uh, put that inside and we can we can always uh, uh, discuss and we can always look through and consider, right, okay. So by next uh, release, I, I was wrong to say that there's nothing that's coming out in the next release, but actually by the release at the end of this year, right, okay, we will have actually team leaderboards, right, okay, and I think this is quite in essential. We couldn't squeeze this in in the last release, right, okay, but... Uh, one of the things that we do want to encourage teach, uh, kids is that while they have friendly competition, we also want friendly competition in teams, right? Okay, so that this collaborative group competition, right? Okay, that we want because we want to teach uh, kids uh, some of these values, right? Okay, of collaborating and, and working together in teams, right? Okay, so that will come up in the next uh, release. Um, there will be also some examples. Um, pro later on, right, okay, of us thinking about uh, lesson level gamification, you realize that basically some of the gamification components, right, okay, are based on section start, section end, right, okay, because I, I think the next point is really to make that a little bit more granular, potentially we can have lesson level, um, you know, lesson start, lesson end, whereby certain achievements actually can be awarded or certain story stories can actually be, 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 be shown, right, okay, and um, we do want to eventually not just uh, you know leave uh, gamification in courses right okay but to allow teachers to kind of flexibly do that even in lessons right okay so that's that's where we are going um we also have been thinking right okay of things like achievements as um, uh, badges right okay more persistent badges so that you know outside of a assignment or a course right okay that the child has completed you might be able to pull one or two of those particular achievements out almost as badges which the students can actually keep inside their learning profile right so over time they can have a sense even outside of assignments uh, a sense of all the assignments and the causes that they have actually achieved right uh, customizable in-game avatars we already have avatars uh, that is system-wide but one of the things that makes uh, perhaps a uh, story elements a little bit more immersive is this idea that uh, basically teachers as well as students can customize avatar so that basically if the game story for example involves uh, maybe a, a competition or a, or a, a struggle of nations for example you know each kid could potentially uh, play the role of a of a of a of a country right okay and maybe put their avatars as a country flag for example right okay so those are things that basically can come and then we spoke a little bit also I think in some places where we talked about that possibility that stories might not just be a straight line stories right okay but there could be story choices right okay so that students can for example choose right okay when a story point comes or story element comes or the student can choose between two or more. Uh, choices which then leads to other branching uh, possibilities later on in the in the in the in the in the story right and then also this concept of individual challenges right so this is really i think there's a lot of room to kind of play around with uh, the possibility that students also make more choices in terms of how they're going to acquire xp right so individual challenges could be a, a situation whereby um, XP awards are modified based on individual challenges that the students uh, make with regards to, for example, quiz competition. So if a child, for example, challenges another child, right, okay, um, and uh, maybe the, the, the XP could be doubled for a child and then, you know, half for the other child, for example. If, let's say, for example, so, um, you know, the child uh, succeeds or, or gets a better grade, right, okay, so some of these more imaginative ways in which I think we can we can do gamification in layer two, right? Okay, and that will be in the future. Okay. Right. These are definitely very exciting features and I hope that the future will be near. Right. So um let's move on to our QA segment now. Good. So 
What is your advice on gamification for open-ended questions? As from what we know, currently XP is only awarded to closed-ended questions. Yeah, so I, I think uh, this, there's this misunderstanding, I think, for most folks, right? Okay, you can uh, give XP uh, for open-ended questions if the open-ended questions exist inside a teacher-marked quiz, right? Okay, because you can only give uh, marks, right? Okay, in a teacher-marked quiz to open-ended questions and because XP is tied to marks, right? Okay, therefore, you know, those get awarded, right? Okay. So if let's say for example you have open-ended questions, do consider them inside a teacher mark quiz, right? Create a teacher mark quiz, put uh, one or two open-ended questions in there, let the kids uh, submit, right? Okay, and uh, basically those uh, those marks will be awarded. What uh, the the accompanying XP, right? Okay, that's for those marks will also be awarded. And there's a greater there's another advantage of every having quizzes, is because uh, for quizzes actually. Um, you can actually moderate or change uh, XP uh, percentage awards based on um, the time when the student actually submits their, 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 their quiz. Right? So again, one of the things that we have actually built is to encourage uh, students who, um, you know, to submit their work earlier. Right? They actually get bonus XP uh, if they can submit, say for example, and that's determined by the teacher. Right? So say if the teacher wants the kids to submit their homework two or three days in advance, right? Okay, you can set the, that time and uh, award uh, bonus XP right? okay, for students who submit uh, uh, quizzes. Right? Okay, so do uh, explore that. Now, uh, by the next release, right? Okay, um, open-ended questions uh, will be possible for you to actually, for standalone open-ended questions, it will be possible for you to actually be able to mark standalone open-ended questions. And once you are able to mark those open-ended standalone questions, then you there is no constraint in terms of actually awarding XP as well. Right? Okay. So I think uh, that will be something that uh, I think will be advantageous. I think for those folks who prefer not to use a teacher mark quiz, right? Okay, but wants to um, potentially just mark for standalone um, open-ended questions. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for that. Let's look at other questions that are coming in. So maybe we can take a look at this one. So what were the considerations to include gamification as opposed to other features into SLS? I think we had a lot of features that basically folks have been requesting for, right? Again, I think uh, over the last three to four years, we've tried to cater to as many as, 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 as possible. When we prioritize features at time, there are a few things that, and this does, doesn't just apply to gamification, there are a few things that we, we think um, we, uh, we, we want to consider, right? We take the whole pool of all the feedback from every one of you, right? Okay, and then we categorize them. And then we look at how potentially what are some of the feature requests that, that come. And the most important thing that we want to look at is the um, uh, potential impact on users, right, okay, for certain features, right. Uh, of course, we want to recognize that there are certain things that are perhaps a bit more core to teaching and learning. But I think fundamentally, if we are going to build a feature that I think 100% of the users, teachers as well as students use, Especially, I think for students, right? Because fundamentally, we have uh, four hundred thousand students and only about forty thousand teachers, right? Okay, so if anything that impacts the students, we will usually try to prioritize those first, right? And then after that, we will then take a look at uh, other features, right? Okay, that uh, perhaps are lower priority. Then for gamification, one of the reasons why we are waited perhaps actually a bit longer, right? Despite it being um, something that actually has been asked for by quite a number of folks. Uh, is really because we didn't think that 100% of teachers will use this gamification, right? Okay, there will be select uh, teachers that are very comfortable with gamification and therefore are very excited about this. But it will take time for other teachers to, to kind of come on board, right? Okay, so really I think in regards to um, how we prioritize, um, I mean, one of the reasons why it's actually slow, right? Okay, is, um, is because of the fact that we didn't um, really the thing that it was as impactful as some of the other features that we have rolled out. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think we actually have some time for a few more questions. Would you like to take this one? This is on PLT. 
So my PLT had a discussion recently about which KAT gamification supports other than AFL. Can you share your thoughts on this? Okay, all right. So I will share my thoughts, right? Okay, which uh, again, I think uh, this is a discussion that I think within um, MOE itself, within uh, attack division, um, we have been having some discussions with our colleagues as well, um, of uh, who are in charge of uh, with with uh, of um, in charge of e pedagogy, right? Um, we feel, or at least I feel, right, okay, that there's a missing KAT, and a missing KAT is uh, driving motivation, right? Okay, so we have very comprehensive KATs, those seven KATs, uh, but they are largely focused on academic and uh, cognitive um, uh, aspects, right, okay, of teaching and learning, right? And what's missing actually is the effective and motivational part, right? Okay, and I think that's the absolutely essential part of teaching and learning. So if you ask me which KAT does gamification drive, it's the 8th KAT, right? okay, which doesn't exist right now. Right? Okay, but uh, that's, uh, that's something that we are considering and we can, we can talk a little bit more about that. And welcome thoughts on that as well. Okay, great. Hopefully there will be the 8th KAT coming up real soon on motivation. So uh, maybe we'll take one more question here. So um, how can teachers actively use the gamification data inside SLS? to follow up in class as feedback or feed forward strategies? Yeah, so that's that's a very interesting question, right? Okay, um, I think that if let's say for example, you are very clear that gamification measures effort, right? Okay, and um, uh, your heat map, right? Okay, where you still have your percentage uh, correct, wrong, and overall marks and, and things like that actually measures mastery then you already know how to do this feedback, right? Okay, uh, these are two very different dimensions that you can actually kind of emphasize on, right? Okay, so I think that uh, it's very useful to kind of uh, show that um, uh, focus actually on, on the heat map, right? Okay, to talk about mastery because that's fundamental, right? That's the central kind of thing, right? So uh, kids are going to be very excited about leaderboards, you know, who's going to be on top and everything. But at the end of the day, it is not always true that those people on the top of the leaderboards are actually the ones who actually mastered the topic or subject as, as, as well as uh, you know they could, right? Okay, so I think that it's more important to focus on heat maps, uh, focus on the you know the the the, the, the to, to, to demonstrate or to show right okay, that you know students uh, learning gaps and, and things like that. That's still going to be your your main go to, right? Okay. However, I think for, for leaderboards, um, again, it's motivational, right? Okay, it's, it's good to potentially flash that, right? Okay, for kids to, to just get, get excited, right? Okay, to, to, to work, on, work on, you know, moving up the leaderboard, all right? Okay, or to actually maybe praise uh, students who uh, generally don't do very well, right? Okay, um, in terms of their mastery, right? Okay, but nevertheless, put in a lot of effort, all right? Okay, and that's going to be reflected in... Um, you know, a lot more XP, for example, you know, because the kids are submitting their quizzes, you know, three days in advance, all right, okay, uh, always trying, always retrying, all right, okay, uh, making sure that they complete things as, as, as quickly as possible, getting the most number of achievements, all right, okay, so it's uh, use the right tool for the right thing that you're trying to teach. I think that would be the best advice that I can give. Hey, thank you, Haixiang, for your advice. So. We, have actually, we are actually approaching the end of our SLS Spotlight session and we actually hope that you will find this session meaningful and relevant to your work. We would also like to shout out to teachers who have tried gamification in SLS to share your experience and reflection with the rest of the community. While it does take a bit of time and effort to create engaging gamified courses, I am sure we will find it heartening when we see our students engaged and motivated to learn. So once again, thank you for attending our session. And just some administrative matters, um, please give us your feedback. My colleague will actually post the link to the feedback um, in the chat. We will also upload our post-session slides to this live broadcast and FAQs in Community Gallery soon. So watch out for the SGLDC space for any updates. Thank you so much and thank you, goodbye.